Praise the Lord. Because we can make it. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. We can make it. May you be blessed by this. Thank you, Jesus.
and I've just been thinking and reflecting even lately that we've been here and it almost seemed like we couldn't have, we may not have made it, but God has brought us here, so I'm so grateful to God. So I'm grateful that we're here, this new setting, but it's okay, it's okay, it's absolutely fine, things are different, but God is still God, and we can worship him anyhow, he doesn't mind. Um, so I'd like to greet Pastor, greet the leadership, greet all of you, my brethren, um, family, and again, um, lovely worship so far. Thanks to Sister Linda for the song, it just ministered everything. It's almost my message um, in one, that all the tests and trials seem to go down, but then God says, I'm here, we can make it, and it's a matter of faith. Um, so the scripture we've just read, and it was Haggai 2. Yeah. And I was going to emphasize on the last section, verse 3 to 9. And if I was going to give a little theme, the theme would be have faith, it's a process. Have faith because it is a process. And when you think about faith and when you think about um, a process, some of us say, yes, we are faithful, we have faith, and it's easy to say. But then when we talk about faith fully, faith is an action. And we're just going to explore this aspect of having faith in the process. And we're talking about process now because more than ever, this change in our normal surroundings, in our normal times, in our normal setting has been such a weird time. Um, so if I just recap just some of the, the verses that we just read, thank you, uh, Sister Charmaine. Who is left among you who saw this temple in its former glory? And how do you see it now in comparison? Is this not in your eyes as nothing? Um, but then he says, Yet now be strong, Zerubbabel. Be strong, says the Lord, and be strong, Joshua. Um, and it goes on to say, According to the word that I've come and co covenanted with you, I am with you um, as you came out of Egypt, and my spirit remains among you. So do not fear. Do not fear. Um, if I jump to the last verse that I've read, verse 9, the glory of the latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts, and in this place I will give peace, says the Lord of hosts. And when I was younger, this scripture just baffled me so much. I didn't understand latter. No one used that word. Um, and I thought the temple, I'm thinking, is that the church? But we're just going to explore that today. Um, and a bit of the context of this scripture, um, imagine there were people who were alive in Solomon's time and in Solomon's time there was a temple, beautiful temple that was built and it was elaborate and they used to go there for worship and then all the time circumstances, captiv captivity, lots of things caused it to be broken down and if you imagine over the years, um, they were in this state now, this is like many years later, that they would look at the temple and see rubble and ruins and think, wow, well, the temple used to be this amazing, beautiful place. And that's why this, the question was asked, how many of you can remember way back to when the temple was big and beautiful? And some said yes, because they may have been around at that time. But then he said, just think about it. Even though you thought it was beautiful then, the glory, what's to come, will be even better you can't fear, but there has to be faith in that situation. And thinking that it is difficult sometimes when you know what you've seen prior and you see something that looks different and all upheaved um, and you've been told to have faith that it will be better. Um, so, in, so the scenario again, it was, it was the Feast of Tabernacles and they were preparing for this festival. And of course they were feeling down in their hearts because they were looking at this temple. And they were thinking, whoa, it's just it's rubble, and it's just not as good as it was. And, and when I thought about this scripture, it came to me last week, I was sharing with another group, and the same scripture came to me, along with some others. And it's, it's like with us some, in some circumstances now, some of us are seeing slight parallels to this parable, or to this story, or to this scenario. Lots of us are asking questions as to what's happening with us, um, and I know I said the temple, but then remember the scripture says, it could be like the church, but it also could be us. We are knowing you not that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yeah? So the temple could refer as much to us individually as it could be to a collective. And maybe we might be thinking that this temple 
used to be okay, this pandemic has caused us to shake and caused us to be flat to the ground or whatever, lots of things may have happened. So we're going to look at that parallel as well. Um, so there was this encouragement that was given, saying that the glory of the latter temple, the glory of what's to come, will be greater than what was. And it says, remember, you have to have faith in that. And what's difficult about faith is that it's about things you can't see. Isn't faith about things you can't see and things you don't know? Yeah? The unknown and the unseen. And I remember sharing with somebody last week that it's almost like when you put your foot on the staircase and you can't see the top. Um, we went on holiday one time and someone said, oh, there's lots of stairs in the hotel. And we looked, we saw about 20 or 30. We said, yeah, we can do this. And then the first batch went and then we saw another 100 steps. We were halfway up, we couldn't go back. And then the slug, if you saw the top and saw a big 160 steps, you would have thought, oh, I'll take the elevator, or I'll do something. Yeah, your head will stop you if you actually saw what you had to go for. And, and if God showed you and revealed everything, and you could peek through the door and saw exactly what God had in store, maybe many of us would not even attempt to move forward or believe what God would have in store for us. So that's why it takes faith. Yeah, this whole walk is about faith in God. And like I said, faith is this more than a word, because lots of people say, yes, I believe, I have faith, I can do all this. But it, faith without works is dead. What do you do in your faith? There has to be some action when you have your faith. And I mentioned the heading was have faith, it's a process. Um, this process that we are going through to whatever destination will take some action. So, if I look at us now in this scenario, we're currently still going through one of the biggest upheavals to the nation. Some of the biggest changes that the world has ever seen in our lifetime. Have you ever seen anything like this where things have been brought to a standstill completely? Um, I remember one of the people, one of the churches, the old churches, were saying we haven't closed our you know the Church of England, they have a singing in the evening with the choirs. They haven't closed their evening song for 800 years, but they had to close it for this 800 years. And I was thinking, Lord, this must be something big, it must be something huge. And many people are asking why, why is this going on? And, and people are trying to come up with answers and thinking, is it God calling the, the sinners to come to repentance? Is it God saying that nations, that the, the creation and nature is screaming for a bit of rest because the people had mashed it up so much with all of the things they were doing? Um, was it, do you remember in the news when you saw that all oh, the, the rivers are clear now <laughs> because people are staying at home? The skies look clearer now because the people are staying at home. Was it that? You don't know. Some say that the church possibly had lost its focus and with all these endless things that they were doing, programs and things, maybe defocused and went away from God's actual will and purpose, the design of the church maybe. There's lots of different points of view that it could be. But regardless of opinions, the one thing that is important for us to do as believers, Reverend Williams was spot on, this time has been the most reflective time ever, when things stopped, when we couldn't go to church as normal, we couldn't go to work as normal, we were locked in, and then the only thing that was accessible to us for church is God himself. Sometimes we had to just only speak to him, it's about developing that relationship with him. Um, and what I was thinking to myself, it would be so unfortunate that in these five months, that some of us um, would have seen it as just an inconvenience and like, oh, I just want everything back to normal and not bother to get closer to God, not bother to develop ourselves, not bother to develop a relationship with God. Because I think everyone has their own individual purpose in this scenario. Everyone has their own individual purpose or thing to process to go through during this. So there's nothing I can't really tell you what you need to learn through this pandemic. I can't tell you, but you would know yourself um, if you're in communication with God. Um, personally, I was, I know this is, this is me being really honest, when I heard back in March that we were going to close the churches, my heart went, oh, a bit of a rest. <laughs> I, know, I shouldn't say that, but I thought, 
I was tired, I was tired, I was tired. And I thought, God, God, thank you. Because I remember communicating earlier in the year to Charles, and I said, if I have to do another convention, another national, it's nice doing them, but the, but the time yeah. and the energy yeah. and the effort, I was physically worn down. So for me, part of it was like, he got the rain, it's a bit of rest. And I thought, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> thank you, Jesus, because um, some of us like, needed it. Yes? And there was um, this thought, and I thought, is this, is this bad for me to feel this way? Is it wrong for me to feel this way that I just needed the time? And I love God 100%, but I just wanted to spend a bit more time with God. Church can sometimes be a distraction because I'm working. You know, when you're working and you haven't got time to just communicate with God one to one. So that was me. Um, and I found I could breathe. I could breathe. It's like the weight came up on my neck for a little bit, you know, on your shoulders, and I could actually breathe. The burden had been lifted a little bit, and then I could just move forward, seeing things clearly. Then I started to understand and reflect and search myself and understand what's important and what things are just dust or things to fly away. Um, our focus has changed because some of the things that we thought were so crucially, crucially important were taken away from us, thinking, how are we going to survive? Well, we survived. Yes, we survived anyway. And um, I understood the importance of scripture and the process, and all of these things started coming together. And I understood that I had to change certain things about myself or learn or listen to God more than I had before. And I mentioned this before that. Um, the temple that I mentioned in the scripture could be us, and I 100% think that the temple is our body. Do you not know that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, who you have from God, and you are not your own? That's 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19. And so this makes the process more significant. So it was more and for us as much as it is for a collective. So imagine. The church building been closed off for long. I'm picturing Bilston Church now, 22 Wellington Road. It's locked off, it's fed stuff, and we can't access it at all. And it's months. And imagine if we go back um, October, November, and we walk in, and it's exactly the same as it was when we left. What would you think? It would be seen like a waste. Yeah? Why was it locked off? Why, were we, why did we have no access? Why was everything turned upside down? And then it goes back and it's the same as it was before. That's why I think the, the lockdown thing that we had to go through was significant for work to be done within each of us. So the church, when we come together, when we all come back, should look different, should feel different because we are different and grown because we've learned and we've developed and God has shown us things, He's taught us things, and we've we sort of gone into deeper depths in Him and higher heights in Him so we can move the kingdom together even more. So that's what I was thinking. There is, it's a, it is a shame if we lock down, and I think we'd want your money back if we locked the, the windows and the doors and girls, and nothing was done. Yeah? Um, but in that process as well, when you look inside, it will be an absolute mess. Yeah? If you looked into Bilston now, we'd be like, oh, you'd have to rip up things. Things are, are knocked down, things are rubble. And I remember um, my little niece, when they went to Willingall, when they were doing the, the renovations there, she walked in and she started crying. She said, Nanny, they've broken the church. Nanny, they've broken the church. And it was traumatic because she didn't understand what it looked like a mess before it could look better. And some of these things and the process that we go through look like chaos, they look like a mess, they look all over the place, and it looks like we're rock bottom, and it looks like we're spread out and messed up, but it's all part of this process that things will come together. And again, it takes faith, and it's a, the unknown, things that we don't see, very difficult. And I was thinking about this whole process, and, and this building of the temple, and I remember a conversation, I oh, don't mind me saying, I think Mike and um, Charles were having a conversation a couple months ago, and it was so random, it's because I made some I made some donuts, and then Charles must have said on the phone, and I would have him saying, it took a long time, but it's a process, and I thought, oh, and I thought about that process, because why would you make donuts? 
numbers, you can just buy them, but I just fancy making some. And I've thought about the process that I had to go through to make them. And you think about, at the start, it was just the ingredients, kneaded together, rough, 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 to, to eat a rough dough, and then it was pounded and kneaded like this, until it was smooth, and then it was covered up and left to rise in a warm place, it was sit left to grow. But then it was pulled out, then knocked again, <laughs> yeah, kneaded and knocked again. And then it was shaped, and then again in a warm place, left to rise in a warm place. And then the last process before you can have its fulfillment was in the hot fire, in the oven, well, in the oil, because I'm frying my dumplings, and in the hot fire, and then that came out, and then that's the fulfilled. And I thought to myself, this process, it's almost like us at times, when we're going through, there are times when it feels like we're being punched and knocked, and we're thinking, God, what is this? What is this? It feels uncomfortable. And then when you feel like you're getting somewhere and it's restful and warm and you're growing, you're getting knocked down again. <laughs> yeah, it could be anybody, it could be anything. It knocks you down again. And then you're thinking, Lord, what's this? You're cut and shaped. God is shaping and forming us into a way so we can grow into something that he has for us. And like I said, if God showed us who we were at the end of our story, many of us would not even believe Many of us wouldn't even believe that we are now who we are if we saw ourselves 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. Yeah, he's brought us far and he has many things in store for us. Um, and so this whole process, the kneading, the shaping, everything that needs to be done. Um, I think the, the more, most painful one was the fire just before the, the fulfilled thing came out, before the, the bread, the donuts came out, they had to go through the fire, which is the most painful part, the hottest thing. <laughs> yeah, but then after that, it came out ready, and then we just ate them. But, but the whole thing is, that was their purpose. But whatever your purpose is, um, the fulfillment will come, but it is a process that you have to go through. And don't feel that you're not faithful, that God is not listening. Don't feel that God has left you when it feels uncomfortable. Because it does say that, behold, I am with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. But we have to understand that it's not always going to be airy fairy balloons and party. All the time, it will not be. And this process, it has been tricky for many of us, difficult for many of us as well. Because there's so many things we've had to deal with. So, when I was thinking about this whole thing, and, and do you know when the news changed, it said, oh, things are going to start opening back. I thought, I felt a little bit, oh, okay, I hope everything's okay. I was dreading going back and having to do exactly the same as I did before. I was dreading going back and feeling the same way as I did before. I was dreading going back and getting worn out as I did before. But then, again, God was saying, part of your process, you can only trust your own, you can only do and walk in your own path and go through your own process. And people are at different stages. Some are going through, some are partway, some are just the needing, some are just being formed, some are rising, some are doing different things, which is absolutely okay, because we're not all going to be the same. But then we just need to make sure that we are moving forward and understanding this whole process in him. So some of us, like I said, we've been sitting back and I'm just spending the time inconvenienced, angry, oh, I've closed church and I've got nothing to do. Rather than sitting back and pointing the fingers at how people are dealing with things and complaining, governments and all of this, grow ourselves, examine ourselves, what have we learned, have we made the right choices, have we learned something in this process, what has God shown and taught us in this walk, Everyone will have a different answer, but what's important is that you're becoming who God wants you to be. The progress should be made, and hopefully we are maintaining our faith. So in all this, when I say to you, the glory of the latter house will be greater than the former. What is to come will be greater than what was. We need to believe it by faith. Believe it by faith for the church, for all our lives, for our families. Believe it by faith that what is to come will be greater than what is past. 
in Jesus' name. And as I'm finishing, there's just a little word that I wanted to share. It's time for us to just reflect and just think about these words. What, where are we? What have we done? Are we um, still angry at the process? Are we still communicating with God? We're all in that. I don't need to tell me, but you know yourself a reflection. And we're going to pray just together. We, you can pray yourselves as well. We can ask God to keep us, give us faith in this process because it is difficult. We've had some upside down things, some things that have just really should have floored us to the ground, but we stood back up. Yeah? We've had things that knocked us and we stood back up. God, only God and only faith in Him has done this. So as we're about to pray, if we can just bow our heads. Thank you, Lord. 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 We're grateful. We're so grateful, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Father God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for what you have done for us. We thank you for what you brought us through. We thank you for taking us, guiding us through this difficult time, Lord. We thank you that your grace and your mercy are new every morning. So when we mess up, Lord, you have a new grace and a new mercy for us, Lord. Open our eyes not to see the world more clearly, but to see you, God. To see you. To see you. Open our eyes to see you working in everything that we do. That things aren't accidents. That all things work together for the good of those that love you and are called according to your purpose. You orchestrate every little part of our lives. Allow us to see your hand working in the small things and in the big things, Lord. And help us to trust in the things that we can't see. Those things ahead of us that we can't see, but you've promised for us, you've promised for us. We pray that, Lord, you will help our disbelief Sometimes we waver in our belief, we wonder whether you even hear us, whether you see us, and we wonder if you're answering prayers, but we know that you are there, Lord. Help our disbelief and our unbelief. Strengthen us, strengthen our belief that we'll be able to do everything that you have called us to do. God, sometimes our strength is gone and we're unable to do what we want, but your word says we can do all things through Christ who gives us the strength. Give us your strength, not just physical strength, but the power to move mountains through faith. Not just the physical, but the spiritual strength that we can maintain our walk in you through, through faith in Jesus Christ. Help us to depend on you. You know what you have in store for us, Lord Jesus. And we trust you 100%. We trust you 100%. Lord Jesus, right now there are people that are anxious, people that are confused, people that are depressed, people that are angry, some are mourning, some are frustrated, but Lord, I ask that your arms of comfort, the consolation, peace, counsel, arms of love, embrace all of us for whatever stage we're going through, and we know that you are with us because you promised it, Lord. We place our lives and our hopes and our desires and our dreams and our families, everything in your hands. Hold us in your hands. Cover us symbolically like a hen covers with the wings over the chickens. Be with us in Jesus' name. Amen.